Purebred horses are surrounded by a pack of wolves. That what they do is they form a circle and they put their heads together and as the wolves try to come in, they kick at the wolves. And they can build a barrier that the wolves cannot get through. But on the other hand, I've not seen this, but this what I've read is that when donkeys get together and they're threatened by wolves or some mountain lion or a predator, they put their heads out. They all individually think, I'm going to watch for the wolves. And then they get nervous and they kick each other. <laughs> they also form a circle, but they got the heads going the wrong way. And they kick each other. Maybe the solution in the last days is for us to get our heads together and to pray together. And don't be kicking each other, but be kicking the enemy. We've all been hurt. But the Lord wants us to stay together. Oh, Pastor Doug, but there was a scandal in my church. If, if you knew what they did with the money. You ever heard that one? Well, first of all, whenever you've got money and projects, there's going to be an element of risk and waste. I suspect after dinner there might be leftovers at your house too. Whenever you do anything, sometimes there's that risk. Did Jesus have problems with somebody in his church mismanaging money? If Jesus was alive and walking the world today, would you want to be part of his church? If you lived 2,000 years ago, even though you knew there was a Judas in the group, would you walk with Jesus? Don't let mismanagement of resources be the lame excuse. Pardon me. I don't want to be too hard on you, but that is a lame excuse. I'm not going to church anymore because they wasted the money. Someone absconded with God's money. I gave a very generous tithe and offering and the check was cashed and it never went to the church. I never got a receipt. Someone, they stole it from me. I've heard people say, I'm pulling out for reasons like that. You will get your blessing for giving to God. Other people will pay to God and answer to God if they've mismanaged the money. So don't worry, you weren't robbed. You need to be faithful with what God has given you. You know, one of the temptations that the devil brought to Jesus he tried to get him to jump from the church. You know, not only did he say, turn these stones into bread, and not only did he ask him to worship him and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, the devil took Jesus to the temple. And then he said, I want you to jump from the church. Does the devil still tempt people today to jump from the church? He wants us to leave. This is the devil. And Jesus said, no, I am not going to tempt the Lord. And when we turn away from Jesus, and when we say, I think I'm going to go out there in the world and I can, I can be a Christian without being in God's house, we are playing with eternal life. We are tempting the devil. We've got to be where God's word tells us we need to be. We need to be together in the house of the Lord. You know, friends, we've all been hurt. And some of us are mad at somebody. Some of us are mad at the Lord. You are not the only one that's been hurt. Was Jesus ever hurt? Was Jesus ever hurt by a friend? What did Judas do? Betrayed his friend. Um, David, Joseph, many others in the Bible, they were hurt by friendly fire. There's a prophecy that you can read in Zechariah 3.16. Speaking of Christ, and they will say to him, what are these wounds that you have in your hands? And he will answer and say, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Wounded in the house of his friends. You know, Jesus was wounded. He told us that uh, when Judas came to kiss him in the garden, Jesus said, friend, do you are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? He said, friend. And sometimes friends hurt each other. You know, you take a risk whenever you love somebody, whenever you open yourself up and you develop a relationship and you choose to trust somebody and you choose to love somebody and you share who you are with that person, there's always the risk that they're going to betray that confidence, that they're going to slight your love, and you're going to be hurt. So what's the answer? Run off to South Dakota to just 
go to Mount Sinai and hide in a cave? Maybe you've been running from God. Jesus is wanting you to know, I am your friend, and I will never let you down. I will never betray you. Do you know that Jesus is your friend? He's still your friend. He won't let you down. He'll never hurt you. I'd like to invite Kelly and, and Dunmore to come. And they're going to be singing this uh, familiar song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I'm going to make an appeal for both those of you who are here and those of you who may be watching. We have a card. And you can go to the website that is called faithreclaim.com. Any of you who are watching, like to encourage you to download this card right now. It just takes a moment or two. Make a note of the website and download the card. We'd like to invite you to make a decision now to come back to Jesus. Here in the hall, the cards will be circulated. Please take the cards, and I'll tell you in a moment about filling them out. What a friend we have. like to encourage you as you get your cards here local, locally, and those of you when you get them and you download them from the website, one more time, that website is faithreclaimed.com. We'd like to ask you some very simple but very important decisions. And I hope you're praying at this moment right now. Some people I think are on the threshold of making an eternal decision that could affect their eternal life. To come back, the Lord might be saying to you, friend, what are you doing here? Oh, but Lord, you don't know how they've hurt me. What are you doing here? He wants us to go and return, to come back and be part of his people. There's really value in your answering these questions, and so just take a moment and let me read them to you as you get your cards. And hopefully you have a utensil to write with. First question is, I believe that the Bible is God's truth and I want to follow its teachings. I mean, that's where it really starts. Do you believe the Bible? Do you want to follow Jesus' teachings? Mark that spot, please. Second question, I believe that salvation comes only by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. I think that most of us who are watching believe that basic truth. Mark that. Now, here's where we get more specific. I was once faithful in attending church in worshiping Christ with God's people, but I've since drifted away, and I now want to recommit my life to Jesus and His Word. And you know what that means? You want to come back. Would you give it a chance? Are you willing to give it a chance? Give Jesus a chance. He's your friend. Check that mark. Some of you, next question, you recognize you've been away for a while. You might need to pray and think about being baptized. Might have been raised in the church, but never baptized or rebaptized. Please mark that on your card appropriately. And then finally, you maybe like someone to talk to you or pray with you about your decision. We're willing to do that, sir. Please mark that on your card. Fill in the appropriate information as Dunbar sings another verse, and then we'll have prayer together. <laughs> 